Andy Mogul. I got a question here from Kaveen Coffey, one of our viewers in Ireland. He asks, I was wondering, does he have any tips for approaching a production company looking for funding for a film, e.g. what to say, to show, or do? Part of the problem is, is they're gonna be looking for a idea. And if you have no experience, it's not gonna happen. A lot of times somebody will write a script or have a movie, and now you wanna submit it to a film company. The problem that you have is, is that if I'm making, if I have in development a movie about, you know, my singing and dancing Muslims, and you give us a movie unsolicited about singing and dancing Sikhs, and I make my Muslim movie, you'll turn around and sue me because that idea showed up. So almost no one takes anything unsolicited because if anything happens, it's close to what you're doing. You'll get sued because you look like you theft the theft of the idea, so you can't do it. Where it's should a, they send it? Where should I don't. You know what? I have no, I have no idea to tell you the truth because nobody wants to take it for the same reasons I'm telling you. Right. And then also, if they take it, um, I know that uh, if you have a finished film and you and you submit it, there are people around the country that look at the movies mm -hmm. before they give it to the final people. So if you have something finished you know, and you want to get into Sundance or something like that. That's the only way I see that anybody can see it. You know, unless you find somebody, you get lucky, you know, you fix Martin Sarkeesi's uh, tire and he's got a flat one day, you know, read my script, you know. But, cause, but if you're known, that's a treatment, you can get a treatment made. Yeah. If you're known, but you got to be known. This is a very difficult business. In the old days, I mean, I look around here, you got these cameras. In the old days, the equipment to make a movie was so expensive. Nobody could make it. Couldn't make it. Right. Okay. Now anybody with a digital camera can make a movie. You know, you look at uh, Paranormal Activity. Okay. For every one of those, I will tell you, there's ten thousand. Okay. They're like it. That don't see the light of day. Right. Okay. Sometimes just things click. Somebody saw it. Somebody did it. The only way that I ever see any of this stuff ever working is in uh, a film festival. That somebody will see something and it'll click with them. Walton Hall asks if filmmakers learn more film techniques on their own or at film school. And what are your thoughts on how important film school is? You should go to film school so you understand which side of the camera you should be pointing at somebody, the technical part of it. I'll, you know, I used to tell people that film school doesn't help, but it, it's actually not true. It tells you technically what you should be doing. Right. Any schools, colleges, any colleges. Unless the guy that's there is guest lecturing or the guy that's sitting there has won awards and made movies and you know who he is. Right. If, it's, if it's a guy you don't know and he's just a professor, that means he can't. Those who can't do teach. That's, that's exactly right. I mean, and, 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 and it's true. I, I used to know a film editor, technically the most brilliant guy I've ever met in their life. But you want to learn technically how to be a film editor? This guy, I, I can't tell you how much that you should see this guy. But he couldn't make the scenes work. You know, he couldn't make the scenes work, so he teaches. I know that if you're in California and you go to UCLA or USC, you have a lot of exposure to people who know what they're doing. Right. Okay, the Spielbergs of the world, you know, you, you, you will get them lecturing you and talk, talking to you. You should go to film school, you shouldn't go to film school. You should go to film school so you understand which side of the camera you should be pointing at somebody. After that, you should go beg, borrow, and work for nothing on as many films as you can, okay? As many films as you can. Little films, big films. There's nothing that uh, you can do better than actually working on a movie. It's people that know what they're doing. The other thing is, if you're going to make a movie, um, if your audience takes nothing else away from this conversation, if you want to be successful, the first thing you have to do is, who's your audience? First question, who's your audience? And if you can't answer that question, you got a problem right away. Who's going? So is it going to give, somebody's going to give you $40 million to make a movie. You better be able to answer that question, because that's questions I would ask. Right. Who's the audience? They would come in, came in one day and they said, we're going to make a movie about clogging. 
And I said, clogging? You mean like with the wooden shoes dancing, clogging that kind? Yes, and there's a murder mystery. So I said, no, I said, no, get out. No, no. I said, I don't care who's in it. Don't even stop. You know, they would come in and they would pitch you. Yeah. You know, I said, stop, I don't care, go away. You know, or, or if you're gonna make a movie about clogging, you have to come in and say, you know, there's 50 million cloggers in the United States. Jeez, I didn't know that. Then you have to look at it a different way. Clogging. You know, I, I wasn't right all the time, but I usually was right about things that weren't gonna work. I, was a, I had that talent, things that weren't gonna work. I was wrong occasionally, but not very many times. I mean, um, Snakes on a plane. Yeah. Oh, it was great. We took it to Comic-Con, it was great. It must have seemed like things were going to go very well. Oh, it did. Oh, it did. I had this huge party at my house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was so depressing by the end. <laughs> and we have, I mean, we have the ability now to go online and you get in real time the grosses coming in from the theaters. Mm -hmm. So I went up on the balcony, I had a big wall and we shot it on the big wall so we could watch it. I knew in the, the afternoon I could sort of decide, well, it's R-rated and it's not going to be and everything. But once this, once New York started coming in, you know, I knew it. We were doomed. Yeah. And my boss was there and he says, why did you spend so, he's German, why did you spend so much money? Look at all these people, these waiters. Why are they all here? What did we do here? Why did we spend this money? So the amount of money we're going to lose on this, it doesn't matter. I didn't understand that what they were doing then. I don't understand it now. They crashed the servers. They were coming in every day. We got another 100,000 hits on this. I mean, I'm sitting there, you know, getting so excited. I got snakes on a plane t-shirts. I got snakes on a plane hats. I'm ready to go walk around Hollywood and be a big maca, you know, a big deal. And the thing just, you know. But it's interesting. One of the reasons that everybody knew about it was the same reason why it didn't work. The title. The title. They don't like snakes and they don't like spiders. It's okay to go and chop somebody up in little pieces of little pieces of, of you know flesh with a chainsaw. That's okay. Right. But God forbid it's a snake. Our last question is from Joey Broyles, who asks, "Why was the Golden Compass such a controversial film, and what ultimately made it a flop? Did religion have something to do with its failure?" What happened was we had Lord of the Rings. We're at the top of our game. We are looked at in a whole different light. So we're trying to find things that would work. Um, one of the reasons, you know, <laughs> Golden Compass happened because it was three books. I didn't read the books, but I had the synopsis of the books. And in the third book, the two archangels end up killing God. And the author of the books is now an atheist, okay? Nice guy, but he's an atheist. So I said in a very early meeting, I said, you know, some preacher, some reverend in Kansas is going to stand up and say, he, they kill God in these books. I said, I don't have an answer what's going to happen. I don't have an answer to this. And I was told by uh, the CEO, I was told, we'll figure it out. Okay. Needless to say, some preacher in Kansas, the Catholic Church got its hands on it. And every school child in America went home with a note from their parochial schools saying, don't let your children see this movie. Um, it, uh, and it did $70 million in the U.S., which was a disaster, but we did $430 overseas. Yeah. Oh, it was a huge hit because yeah. they read. Europe reads. The right. same thing with Lord of the Rings. No matter how big we were, we have 300 million here. Overseas, they beat us on every one of them. Right. They were over 400, almost 500 million on a couple of them. Now, to the end of the New Line story, like how did that whole thing, did Golden Compass contribute? Was there... Golden Compass contributed to it in the sense that New Line, we were different than the big studios. The big studios own and control their films overseas. Right. They have their own distribution arms. We would find an overseas distributor who would be our partner. And they would contribute so much, there would be a formula how much money they would contribute to making the movie. So if you had a movie, the, the story on, the, for instance, Golden Compass was, they thought we were going to go under. We are spending $300 million, and if it didn't work, we'd go crazy, it would be over. But the overseas distributors that we had, they were basically our partners. They had contributed, the, of the $300 million, they had contributed $160 million of it. 
they would have all gone broke if it had failed. Right. But when you think about it, we had $140 million in three movies. It was like having three failures. That would have been it. I mean, our bosses could have lost their job, you know, for being dumb. But the studio wouldn't have, would not have gone under, would not have crashed. Do you think that there's one ultimate thing that, that was like the okay, final so blow? Two things were going on at the okay. time. Uh, Bukes had just become president of Time Warner. Okay. okay? An accountant. As a filmmaker, you're going to run into the accountant before it's over. Okay? It's a deadly, deadly guy. All right? Because no matter how friendly he tries to be, he can't help himself because he's an accountant. Okay? So Bukes did two things. He looked at the $400 million dollars that we had gone made overseas with uh, Golden Compass and realized he hardly got any of it because our, the partners got it and it was a failure here. We were duplication with, with Warner Brother Pictures. It's the only duplication of all of Time Warner, it was us. But we were a little more edgy and a little more interesting as a film company. Warner Brothers was great with the Batmans, great with the big ones, but all the little interesting stuff they couldn't do. So anyway, so Bukas has decided that he is going to show Wall Street that he's a cost cutter. So he cuts New Line. Now, New Line was 1.5% of Time Warner's overhead and 2% of the profit. So even if he did it and it was stupid, he couldn't get hurt either way. And he showed the street. Of course, the minute he did it, the stock went down again. Right. Okay, so it was done. Thanks for watching my interview with David Tuckerman. Like last week, I've put a lot of the unedited video footage online so you can see some of the stuff I had to cut out. Also, the top one there is a deleted segment that I really wanted to include where he talks about the one movie that he wanted to make that he never got to make. And it sounds like it would have been a really awesome movie. So if you want to see that story, it's unedited, but you can check it out there. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on Friday 101. So the one movie that I always wanted to make that we couldn't... We, we didn't make because everybody was afraid. Jan de Bont brings us his project. It's called Meg. It's a story of a Jurassic shark from the Jurassic period. The shark is um, 75 feet long. The great white is 25 feet. Right. I wanted to make that movie so bad. If this moron didn't have the rights, I'd get the rights and try to hawk it everywhere. <laughs>